good teamwork actually works. But the key thing is you have to talk to each other. It's no good having a team which doesn't talk to each other. Well, I, I guess the one thing that changed it all was us all sitting down and communicating together as a whole team, really. To start with, I didn't think it would work. I went to the meetings. Um, they suggested all this change. Um, it did work, and we're reaping the benefits for it. I think um, the set of ideals and goals could be the same for any surgery. This is really good in leading the way and making things better for the patient, and that's got to be a win-win for everybody. Everybody asks me what the silver bullet is and usually they're expecting me to give them a sheet of paper which tells them what to do. And the silver bullet isn't a sheet of paper telling what to do with each patient, it is to get the staff, every member of staff, the ward HCAs, the ward nurses, the surgeons, the anaesthetists, the clerical staff, the, um, the secretaries, the admin staff, get everybody in a room and get them to understand that we need to redesign the whole process, the whole flow of the way the patient goes through the system. And it, the silver bullet is getting a team together to work together on improving the, the whole process for the patient. Nice place, nice food, uh, a nice big room in which we can sit and meet, uh, and uh, an incentive for everybody to turn up there because everybody knew the food was going to be good. But even the managers turned up, which was very good, and he had a meeting to go to, so that was really nice. And it re means it meant to me, okay, that. We are a team. Not only was it a good way of meeting other members of the staff that don't directly work with the spinal surgery team at Musgrove, also it's quite nice, you know, as a team building exercise. And we got about 30 people there and had a, a directed discussion to talk about what the patient pathway for spinal patients currently look like and then to start to develop some ideas about how it could be better. And it's really interesting to find out how much of time we, and resource we wasted on the way. There were so many things that were duplicated. There were notes going back and forth to various parts of the hospital, all of which were completely unnecessary and which had been added on as bits and pieces when someone had a problem previously. So when we went through the process and we wrote the whole thing out on a long sheet of paper in the mint and mustard, we suddenly realised uh, how much we could do to shorten the time uh, where all these things happen and thereby increase the rate of delivery of care to our patients waiting for spinal surgery. The second silver bullet is um, following a quality improvement process which is fairly rigid because if you don't, if you deviate from the path halfway through, you end up with no particularly valuable results. The aim needs to be tight at the beginning, you need to know what you're aiming at. We said let, we will try and reduce the length of stay for spinal patients by 30%. We didn't know if that was achievable. At our first group meetings we decided what interventions, as a team, everybody put in ideas as to around what they thought would improve the pathway. It gets incredibly messy in the middle, you feel completely lost and I think that's where a lot of quality improvement efforts give up. So that's the point of the measurement, is to check whether you're on trajectory with achieving that aim. So patients on average stayed six days in hospital, and now they stay on average for 2.7 days, which is really significant. For many years, as doctors and nurses and physios and OTs and, and therapists, we've thought that we can come up with a good idea and spray and pray, just put it in place and hope for the best. It doesn't work. We've got too many examples through healthcare for the last 40, 50 years which prove to me that that doesn't work. You need to have a process which you follow fairly rigidly to make quality improvement work. <laughs>But when I looked at, my, at the way my colleagues were working and some of the things they did, I found that a lot of my practice could be tweaked uh, and made far better for patients itself. Uh, a simple example is one of my colleagues, Yi. Yi was very keen on patients uh, not getting constipated. And we, were, we found it very, uh, absolutely hilarious to start with 
my colleagues they think my fixation on bowels was a bit too um, I don't know Freudian in a way I was stuck in the anal stage but I knew deep down that there is a significant problem and because of the improvement network techniques that we, we said okay they listened and I was allowed to demonstrate that there was a problem And suddenly we realised that constipation was making patients stay in hospital about two days longer than they needed to be. And so we had, I adopted her practice of giving patients laxatives before they came into hospital and on the day of surgery and on the day, evening of surgery. And suddenly we found we had taken two days almost <laughs> off our patient's stay because patients went home, they were more comfortable uh, and the whole experience was a lot better. Over the ten years that I've been here, a particular way of using epidurals has become sort of embedded in the fabric of what we do. So I suppose my most difficult thing was giving that up for a large group of patients to say we're going to do something differently and my fear that by doing that um, we'd have more patients who were experiencing post-operative pain because we weren't giving them enough analgesia and as you've said from the results that's shown not to be the case. But that was the hardest thing for me to anticipate giving up. And the fact that he changed it, he, he changed it, means okay, that yes, he's listening, he's seeing evidence, and that's a good, but that's a good thing about working in a team. Nobody's stuck in their own ways, okay, not to want to adapt. Everybody wants to adapt to go forward. And you don't get that in some certain trusts at all. You don't get that in any trust at all. In my last play, it was, it was difficult because it was just too big. And the good thing about Musgrove is it's small enough to allow you to go forward. Our main involvement was a small group of us developed a passport for the patient, so it's an information booklet um, to help guide them through the process that they were given at pre-admission um, to ensure they knew what to expect and um, everybody was getting the same information from every source really. So, so yeah, the patients, patients are enjoying the booklets. The physios and the OTs have been absolutely outstanding. Elle and Sarah have, have completely changed their own mindset about what spinal patients can do post-operatively and how soon they can be mobilised and that's been a real challenge for them. They've had to challenge their own beliefs about what's safe and we've really um, empowered everyone in the team to get patients moving quicker and that's a huge uh, improvement. I think with the changes in like the surgical techniques and the anaesthetics, it's been really positive to see patients being able to, you know, sit on the edge of the bed and sometimes actually mobilise out to the bathroom, perhaps on the same day of surgery, and obviously patients actually going home that evening, whereas before they're probably staying overnight, they probably have problems following the surgery, i.e., with dizziness if they weren't getting up and being mobilised until um, perhaps the next working day. One of our big successes is the Daily Aims boards. Patients have really been able to identify with what they've got to do each day. Um, we document on the daily aims boards what we would like them to do and they really enjoy achieving those and the feedback from the patients has been excellent. Um, if there's one thing I could single out, the daily aims boards were absolutely fantastic. Um, they're a real good resource. It meant that the patients were motivated to do things um, it, they could see what they had to do and what aims they had to do. Also the nursing staff um, could contribute to what they needed to do. Um, the physios and o OTs could actually write on the boards um, to allow us all to mix in together. How do I feel about it? Yeah. Great, can't wait. Excellent. We've so also introduced pre-op drinks, which is a high energy drink, yeah. which patients are having before and after their surgery. The evidence for them has shown that outcomes are much better for patients. Data collection, for me, was another one of the silver bullets, which enabled us to see our progress through the project and understand how effective or successful we were being. So does everybody need a Claire Mike? So everybody needs a Claire. She'll be so embarrassed me saying this, but Claire White in admissions, who's got an utter passion for this work, Claire has gone to the ward, badgered the poor nurses to collect, to collect the data, 
collected the data collection sheets. She's had to find them in all sorts of corners of the hospital and take them back to admissions and process them and, and come up with some, some regular monthly there. figures about our performance. Yeah, everybody needs a Claire. She's amazing. I really like to be able to take a set of numbers and either prove or disprove something. If I can prove that something's working and it can go in the right direction to make it better, then as far as I'm concerned, it's win-win. If you keep reporting on all the data, you can keep seeing progression and, you know, maintaining progression, then you can't go far wrong, really. The key thing is, whenever you do embark on an improvement project, I would say teamwork and software and manpower, and the key crucial manpower is Claire, really, because she collected the data to prove that whatever we were doing was correct. <laughs> I mean, the fact that we've demonstrated that music here, that if we can improve the efficiency of the rest of the hospital by doing that kind of work, it may be difficult, but we, that's what we thought it might be. It would be difficult to change the entire spinal service. But as they say, one of my trainers said, and it's an old saying, okay, how do you eat an elephant? And bit by bit, you know, and that's what you need to do, take bit by bit. Any team can take on what we've done. Get involved, honestly. I think it's the best thing that we did as a team to try and bring something like this in and the impact is huge. Success um, is a great motivator and I think the success of this process um, will make it much easier for people to engage with these change processes in the future. Everybody in the hospital pays part in the pathway for a patient and anything in your area can be improved. I think one of the biggest things that came out to me was I had wasted 14 years of possible improvement. <laughs>